Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Jack Smith. I'm Shrikar Jandran. And I'm Anish Gupta. You missed it last time we started recording this. Shrikar started waving at y'all. Uh, joke that Basically it was... saying he was last in picks. Yep, because... it's the last in picks wave right there. Uh, Shrikar was at la- did it last week. Uh, went can we, can we say who's first? Can we just... Quick reminder. Hey, me and Anish tied at 14-2. and two. Uh, Shrikar I don't know who's 12. first overall, though. Anish is first overall through two weeks. Woo! Big deal. Uh, he's 26-6. Yeah. and six. Uh, The fans and I are 24-8. and eight. Shrikar's 23-9. and nine. Uh, the fans came off a 13 and three week last week, by the way, this can include you guys, uh, in our Instagram every week, we give you a chance to predict the games, the majority rules. Uh, and we, we predict your guys' records, uh, alongside ours, uh, streetcars, like we said, 23 and nine, uh, fans, you and me, uh, 24 and eight and Anish is sitting at 26 and six. Me and Anish both went 14 and two last week, 15 and one. If the saints could have clutched up in that last Someone game, jinxed them. That, um, <clears throat> we can, we can insert that. We're not going to talk about it, but, uh, the Fine. Raiders will not do anything against the Saints. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We um, but, have those moments sometimes. But so that's where we stand after week two in picks. Make sure to go check out our Instagram and you know put put in your input put in your input for these picks and you'll be included in that record and you'll have a part in it. But uh these are our week three picks kind of going into the slate. Um there's some great games this week. Uh we like we said at the end of it, rounding out is Chiefs Raven. Chiefs Ravens. Uh, we're also going to have a future episode just talking about the game completely in general. We'll still give our, our, our predictions at the end of this one, but keep an eye out for that episode. But starting out Thursday night football, uh, mm-hmm. the worst of the primetime games this week. Uh, we've got Miami versus Jacksonville. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be a good game, but it's not going to be, you know, the most entertaining game, I don't think, uh, on this slate. But who do you guys have winning this one? Look, I'm a, I'm a believer in Minshew Magic. I mean, he's not a superstar, but look, he, he knows how to win. You know, the Jaguars wouldn't have nearly as many wins since he joined the team if it wasn't for him. He made it happen in week one, nearly pulled off the miracle again in week two. And in week three against this Dolphin squad, I think he's going to pull it off here and he gets the Jaguars their second win. Um, I also just don't have much trust in the Dolphins, if I'm being completely honest. They're better than they were a year ago for sure, but I, I just think they still lack that overall talent that they need to win on a consistent basis. Uh, I think the defense... It's doing his best, but, I mean, that offense is average at best. Um, so I- I'm going to take the Jaguars here. Simple as that. Uh, I, you guys know how much I like the Dolphins. Yeah, but he, he hyped him up. Mm-hmm. I just – you're right. I think it's not even – because they played well against uh, Buffalo. We can't – I'm sorry, but they did. They almost won. Guys, they almost they, won. And they could have. It was just, again, the magic of my guy, Josh Allen. But um, I – the Dolphins haven't looked terrible. I, I think a 10-point loss to New England, while I know Jack doesn't think it was close, I thought they played pretty well down the stretch. They almost did uh, start a comeback there until uh, they just couldn't uh, stay consistent. I think Fitzpatrick threw three picks that game. He just couldn't, wasn't there. But I think this is actually good for them to get their confidence later in the year because I do also have Jacksonville in this game just because, like Jack and I have also said about Gardner Minshew, we've talked about it before, he, he was underrated his rookie year, and he actually had stats that were better than Kyler Murray. Both of us have said that. And uh, I know Jack was a little bit higher on him than I was, but Minshew's looked really good. Again, 19 for 20. That just stands out to me. Like, that's just incredible. And then I was watching the Titans game. He almost brings them back, and if it wasn't for a defensive line pick, uh, picking it off and tipping it, who knows what could have happened that final drive. So he looks really good. I think he – and the best part is this gives this team confidence because everyone read them off, and now they're looking, sitting at one and one, right? And they've got the utmost confidence coming into this week. I know it's a short week, but I think they can get it done on Thursday night football. And I'm going to go with Jacksonville. But 0-3 for Miami, do you guys think Tua could start sometime? Sooner I, yeah. than later. I think we see Tua you know, yeah. sooner than expected. It's, Fitzpatrick's just not working out. Uh, and it's just simple. It, the way that it works for Miami is if they get a good game out of Fitzpatrick, they're going to win. If they don't, uh, he's got to be he's got to be great, I believe, for them to win. Uh, he was he was good last week. He wasn't he didn't throw three picks. Three touchdowns which is, last week. Not bad. Yeah. Um, but not enough to, to beat Buffalo. But then again, it's going to take a lot to beat Buffalo this year from any team. Um, but it just, these are both teams. I, I had Miami being much better than Jacksonville this year. I did not expect to pick Jacksonville yeah. in many of these games, uh, if any at all. Um, but it's just one team, I believe, has more momentum right now, and one team's been more disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Jacksonville. Um, but Miami's still got a chance. They really do. Uh, and. I- Closer than most people think, and I think it is actually going to be an entertaining game. Despite I think it's going to be close. Mm-hmm. It's going to be close, and I think I think that, I mean, Miami's the better team. Uh, just simply put, I think they've got more talent, and I think they're the better team. But right now, uh, I just feel like Jacksonville's got 
got something rolling. It seems Quick like note on that, though. I think there's a difference between more um, more talent and a better team. I, again, I, meant, I meant better right. roster in general. Okay. But yeah. I'm saying right now, I think Jacksonville's playing better football, which is why I pick them to win in week three. Exactly. More momentum. Good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So then we move on to Sunday. Uh, the first the first matchup on Sunday, the Chicago Bears versus the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, go back and watch our winners and losers episode. And I think you can, uh, you know, pick out who our biggest loser was from last week. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, they really screwed up against Dallas and, and they really they really blew it in that game. Um, and now they face Chicago, who's two and zero, but they haven't had you know great performances in both of their games, uh, and they've won they've won due to other teams kind of losing it right at the end. Um, so we see two teams that haven't really impressed us this year. One team's two and zero, but one team's zero and two. So who do you have winning in this one? Shrieker, you want to? I want to go last on this one. You go last. Look, okay. I'm probably going to regret this because. It's the Bears, and I never have good luck with the Bears, but I'm just still not buying the Bears as a legitimate threat. You know, Again. Oh my I, God. I'm still not buying it. You know, they've taken down the Lions and Giants so far, but I believe the Falcons, and despite being 0 2, I think that's the best team they've seen so far. And, you know, it's not like the Falcons haven't flashed upside at all this season. You know, they kept up with the Seahawks in week one, they held a huge lead over the Cowboys in week two before you know, just blowing it in typical Falcons fashion, I guess. And this one, you know, they're facing a far less explosive offense than Dallas or Seattle. Um, but yes, I'll say this. Mitchell Trubisky has made me eat my words at times. He, he's been looking good. And it's, al- it's almost as if he knows his contract is about to be up. And he wants, you know, his, his money. He wants to be the franchise quarterback for the Bears. He, he, he's playing with more motivation, if that makes sense. Uh, the Chicago defense is also outstanding, so I'm going to give them credit where credit's due. But you know they have yet to face this type of offensive attack that Atlanta offers. So um, I'm predicting that the Falcons win this game. But as I said before, I'm probably going to regret it. But look, I'm taking Atlanta. I'm taking Atlanta too. Uh, previously in his career, Matt Ryan had never once started 0-2. He's 0-2 exactly. right now. He's not going to start 0-3. I don't think. Uh, and last week against Dallas, uh, Atlanta outplayed them. Atlanta outplayed Dallas for almost the entire game. And what happened was an anomaly. It's, it's not who the Falcons are, and it's not who they're going to be, you know, in every single game. Um, and simply put, they looked more impressive to me in that loss uh, for most of the game than, than Chicago really has in both of their wins. Um, I mean, they put up 17 points against the Giants defense. And I think Atlanta – I think Atlanta – they may have a better defense than the Giants on paper. Uh, we'll see how that works. But they're going to put up more than 17 points. Uh, they're probably going to put up more than 30. I think they could put up 30 points really any game. That's how good their offense is. They just need to get it done on defense. And they face they face a poor offense in Chicago, I think. Uh, and I don't know if Trubisky gets it done. But I've got Atlanta. They're going to get a win here. They should have won last week. It was an anomaly they lost. And Matt Ryan is not going to start 0-3. I'm so glad someone agreed with me on a Bears pick, man. I'm shocked. I wanted to go last because I was going to take Atlanta, and I'm taking Atlanta. Yeah. I'm I'm absolutely. I thought you guys were full on Bears. Because here's what I'm saying, and I had this going into the, my playoff predictors too. It's still there. Um, look, Jack, you said it perfectly. I just don't see Matt Ryan starting going three. And again, I think this team bounces back. I mean, that's a terrible loss. And as much as I like the Bears, right, you guys know I, I've been high on them coming into the year. Yeah, They're going too. to lose some. I mean, you're not – right? So I, I had them second in the division. I think Jack was iffy on them eight and eight, right? But I had them a little bit better. I think this the, – those two and one still great, and I think this is the loss. And it's not going to be like Mitch Trubisky throws like four picks or something like that. I just think Atlanta outscores them, simply put. Uh, and I'm not going to say Trubisky is going to be terrible or anything. He could. I mean, he, he didn't do, look that good against the Giants. He did enough – uh, to win but yeah I I think this Atlanta I just something's with me here they're at home uh, I just think they they'll look better here their offense obviously keeps at pace hopefully Julio Jones plays I know he's questionable that's I'm barring on him playing and him winning obviously I don't think he drops another touchdown pass like that I, I last time I've seen that was like three years ago I remember he did it but other than that I haven't seen that from him so I'm expecting them to bounce back and yeah I got Atlanta with the dub but I'm shocked that you guys picked it so, yeah, that's why I wanted to go last. I guess we got a clean, clean sweep here. You know yeah, me, I always pick against the I'm Bears. surprised you didn't try and differ just to, just to try and get the points if, uh, <laughs> if, 
No, because I, I feel like if we all, because this is the one I'm least confident about. So yeah. This was, we're yeah, all this wrong. was a real one. If, if we're wrong, we're all wrong. Which yeah, is but it, it's, and it's, I have it's, the lead, so. Yeah, it's good, it's good. We're getting kind of a we're getting an upset, and we get it in unanimous fashion. I mean, I believe Chicago's favorite. It would make it should it would be. make the most yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, the next game uh, is Los Angeles Rams versus the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the Bills cleaned cleaned house in their home in their home game this year, and they 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 made it close against the Dolphins uh, in in their road game. They're all, they're at home now against Los Angeles, and I'll start it off. I think that I think Buffalo's look great. I think they were going to be great at the beginning of the year. I didn't think the Rams were going to be good. Uh, but they've proven that they that they can be. But they've also played uh, two teams that have been very disappointing throughout the year. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Buffalo in this game just because I predicted them to be better, um, and I think that this is the best defense Los Angeles has faced, and it and it could be the most productive offense uh, in this game against them. You can go. Okay. Uh, so we got two players here that are in this game that I really like: Melo Cooper Cup and uh, Josh Allen, who. Unlike Carson Wentz, Josh Allen has actually proved me right. So uh, thank you better you, watch out what you're saying because you know you might jinx him too. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Jinx, I'm just gonna say he's been great <laughs> and uh, he's been doing better than Darnold because he is better than Darnold and he will be. He always has been and always have to throw that in an episode, guys. I'm sorry, but this was my <laughs> he'll throw it in again. I guarantee it. I Darnold will. Yeah. So man. Bills, Bills, Rams. Again, I, I'm actually. I was a little bit higher than you two were, but again, I had them seven and nine. So not as much higher as you two. So, but yeah, I, this offense has looked really good defense though, at times was looking a little bit suspect, uh, especially in that third quarter. Uh, if it wasn't for that diving interception, but I think it was Williams, uh, this could have been a different story. Uh, Eagles Rams. So I'm going to take Buffalo here just because I think they're the better overall team. And I trust uh, their quarterback a bit more. This is another one that I'm not like really confident in. I think it's going to be a really close game. Um, you know, I'm not really sure how many people expected the Rams to come out of the gates this quickly. Take LA, bro, please. Um, you know, you head to New York to take on the Bills. You know, the Bills, they, they have shown well so far, but, you know, they played the bottom two teams in the AFC East, and even then, you know, they nearly blew it against the Dolphins last week. The offense, it's looked explosive at times. The defense, it hasn't been as dangerous as it was a season ago, but I'm not writing it off yet because I think it's still – I think it's still up there. Can the Bills keep the Rams in check? Come on, come on, pick them, please. Okay, fine. I'll, I'm, I'm probably I'm gonna go with my gut, and I'm gonna take the Rams in a close game. Uh, ultimately, okay. I think it it's obviously gonna be a one possession game. Um, I'll I'll say I'll say the I'll say the Rams. I'm not gonna predict how they win. Because I feel like that'd be taking it too far, but uh, I'm, I'll, I'll take the Rams in this one. Okay. I think this could be a game that the Rams maybe lead for a while, and Buffalo kind of closes in towards the end. Fourth quarter, Allen, baby. Yeah, and maybe becomes a little bit more stingy on defense towards the end. But uh, the Rams could definitely keep that lead. Uh, but I think this is going to be one of the more entertaining games of the week. Was definitely one of the harder mm-hmm. ones to pick. Um, the next game, safeties can contain uh, Tyler Higby, a guy who a guy who I've been pretty right about so far too. Another guy. So fantasy far. wise, whoever whoever t- took my advice on that, three uh, touchdowns, yeah, welcome. paid yeah, off. You, t- I think, did you draft him right before me in our followers league? Yeah, yeah that, I, 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 I was took, upset I about took that him one. In every league I could have, I took yeah. him in as many leagues I could have. Smart. Uh, so our next game is Washington at Cleveland. Cleveland did beat uh, the Bengals. It wasn't. It was. It was a dominant performance ish. <laughs> was a, a light dominant performance, um, and then Washington. I think that, I mean, Washington-Arizona was one of the least talked about games of the week just because, you know, when it was on and other games it was competing against, and it wasn't shown around us. Um, but Washington, they, they did kind of get handled by Arizona, uh, but they were able to beat uh, Philly week one. So, I mean, could that could this defensive line rip apart the Browns' new offensive line? Yes, but the Browns' offensive line also didn't allow a single sack last week. Uh, and I predicted Cleveland to be the better team. Uh, they're at home. I think they come away with a win in this one. If you want to go last since it's the Browns? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm ta- I'm going to take the Browns in this one. Um, this Wait, one was what? actually You're going to pick them? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think this was actually kind of tough to make like a final call on because, you know, there's a significant gap talent-wise, but I think these teams are more evenly matched than you'd think. Um, but what we've seen through two weeks convinced me that I think, I think the Browns are going to win this one. It's just that run game um, is very good for the Browns. Washington doesn't really have anything to lean on offensively. Um, 
they do have Terry McLaurin. They have Antonio Gibson, but you know, I, I just, I just don't see Washington beating Cleveland uh, in Cleveland, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Um, and the Browns have a pretty tough defense. I think they're going to be on Dwayne Haskins all game long. So um, I think, I think the Browns take this one. Here's what I'll say. Uh, I'm actually more nervous about this game than a lot of people would think. I, I really think this front seven is, is elite. And I thought they would give Kyler Murray problems. That's why I, like, I thought they would get a couple sacks. And I think they did. I think they got three sacks on him. But you saw what he was able to do on the ground. I just couldn't stay. He's just too fast. So Baker's not that. And the thing is, he works best when he is out of the pocket off play action. So I'm a bit nervous on that. And also, Jack, they didn't not only did they not allow a sack, they didn't allow a single QB hit either. He wow. was protected the entire night. One QB pressure the entire game. So that's like a perfect game. And that's also with Conklin out. So obviously we'll get him back. We get Mac Wilson back. Greedy's practicing, Kevin Johnson, another corner. So we get our players back a little bit. Um also another thing I'm con- uh that I think would say works in our favor is the fact that Joe Burrow was getting a lot of his stuff mobile, mobile wise, right? Like he was running around in the pocket, out of the pocket, getting those uh, fourth and fives via the ground too. I just don't think Dwayne Haskins is as mobile. So I think that works in our favor. We have young defensive linemen that can get after the quarterback and move to the sides. So I think that helps us. I'm, I'm not confident on this pick, but I'm going to go with my Browns on this one. I'm just not as confident as a lot of people would be. Mm-hmm. And our next game on the slate is Tennessee at Minnesota. I was high on Minnesota last week because they put up 30-something points against the Packers in only 18 minutes of holding the ball. I thought their offense was primed to come out and and put a lot of points up on Indianapolis. It just didn't happen. Uh, and at times during that game, they looked like the worst team in the league. Uh, they they were not able to do really anything in that game. Uh, and they've been extremely disappointed that, that they've been one of the worst teams in the league so far uh, at 0-2. Tennessee sitting at 2-0. Um Tennessee did almost lose to Jacksonville last week, but I'm high on Tennessee. Uh, Minnesota still didn't have Yannick Ngakwe back. It's going to be hard to win games without him because uh, he's a huge part of their defense. Uh, I'm going to take Tennessee you mean, in this Daniel one. Hunter? Or, yeah, Daniel Hunter. They do mm-hmm. have Yannick Ngakwe. Um, but I'm taking Tennessee in this one just because I haven't liked what I've seen from Minnesota. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm going to take Tennessee. Minnesota's just looked very underwhelming. They look like garbage. And, you know, Dalvin Cook's played well, but, you know, he's not getting enough touches because the Vikings are just always playing from behind. Kirk Cousins, it's just not – he's just not playing good. But, you know, his O-line hasn't been great either. And the Minnesota defense has just looked like a shell of last year, Uh, just with all the off-season losses, the injuries, um, the inexperience at cornerback too. So I think think I'm going to take the Titans here. This is one of the safer picks I'm actually going to make. Um, because I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not confident in Minnesota anymore. So um, Tennessee's my pick. Dev, I, I thought if you're watching, I thought Mike Hughes was going to be good. I thought, uh, you know, Colton Hill or whatever. I was, I mean, you were telling me all these good things about them in camp, but I'm seeing it and it's just, it just goes to show what my initial thoughts were. Experience in the NFL is key. Yep. Uh, and mm-hmm. you see it, they're just too young. Again, 15 rookies. On your roster, roster out of turnover is, is Come on. ridiculous. I mean, it's just hard to overcome, and especially with a schedule like this. I think their back half is favorable. Maybe they get some games in the end. Maybe they don't even. They don't even. Maybe they tank. Who knows? Uh, right? Maybe Kirk Cousins is just not the right fit as without Diggs, or right? Maybe Diggs' value is just clearly uh, lost. So, you know, Minnesota is not looking too good. Um, I'm not going to lose all faith and say this team is like, going to be like a top five pick or something like that. I'm not going to say that right now. But I will say um, that Tennessee, again, I've been very high on Tannehill throughout his career. I've, I've told uh, plenty of Niner fans this too, just him versus Jimmy G. I will take Tannehill 100 times out of 100. That's angered a lot of people, but I think it's looking good as of right now. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, keep uh, keep doing your thing, man, and I'm going to pick Tennessee to go 3-0 here. In our next game, uh, we all had the Saints beating Las Vegas. Las Vegas came out, and they beat the Saints by 10. Um, and also – New England made it very close against Seattle. Really, they were one play away. Seattle wasn't able to stop them on that goal line cam run all game until the, the last play of the entire game. Uh, and so New England got the loss, but it really felt like a win, to be completely honest. Both teams in that game uh, felt like they were winners. Um, but it, that being said, I, I'm taking New England in this game. Uh, I still just not a huge believer in Las Vegas. Uh, it's at New England, and I think that New England is a superior team, superior, superiorly coached team. And I think they get it done in this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take New England as well. And as much as I hate to admit it because, you know, 
we all don't really want to see the Patriots win the division again. They're looking pretty scary. Um, and I think against the Raiders, I think Cam Newton's looked like he's returned to that MVP form. Hmm. Oh, sorry, just again, we're going to say it every episode. Who said that? So I just had to throw it in there. All right, finish. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. But I think I think the Raiders are. You know, how do I say it? I think the Raiders are going to get a lesson in in what it means to be a true contender in the AFC in this game. I think the Patriots know they need a big bounce back. I trust Bill Belichick more than John Gruden, so um, I'm I'm going to take the New England Patriots in this game. I just want to give a quick shout out to Shriekar because he did have the Raiders higher than Jack and I did. So, and they, they're proving him right so far. So I want to shout him out on that. Yeah, man. Uh, that being said, again, you guys know how much of a cam fan I am. He looked tremendous in that. I was so oh, happy. Yeah. I was so happy when I saw that game. And the thing is in the fourth quarter, they kept it close. They were long, efficient drives him to Edelman, right. On all those plays, he was able to, here's the thing. I think the Raiders benefited from it because Drew Brees couldn't get the ball downfield. And I, people are saying his arm is completely washed. I'm not going to say that yet just because he didn't have a downfield threat to throw to. So, um, I, that being said, I think Cam has a stronger arm. I think he can get it downfield more and I think he can run downfield more. And that's going to be concerning for the, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, thing is, for the Patriots, who's going to stop Darren Waller? That's my concern. Hopefully, he uh, has a good game. Uh, again, secondary is, I think, going to shut down most of their uh, receiving core. Just, I think that that's why I think also the coaching, uh, coaching wise, I think Bill Belichick will find a way to get it done. Uh, and on the Raiders side, again, who's going to stop Cam rushing wise? So I got the Patriots mm-hmm. here. But again, the Raiders have looked pretty good. And let's not be surprised if this team maybe even finishes with a winning season. Yeah, I think it's definitely possible. Um, but I mean, clean sleep from New England here. Uh, we had a clean sleep with a clean sweep with the Saints last week, and the Raiders were able to defeat that uh, on the road. Or no, they were at home uh, in at the home. first new stadium. It just looked like they were on the road because we had never seen that stadium for the Raiders before, and that's it looks a, that's amazing. A, that's a great stadium, by the way. It, it, it looks, looked slick. Oh it looked awesome. I saw it when it was being built. I used to go to uh, Las Vegas every uh, year to see it now in final form. Awesome. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, but our next game. Uh, San Francisco gets to play again on the MetLife turf, something that they heavily complained about after losing players upon players uh, against the Jets. But Shrikar kept saying, you know, oh, we might not even beat New York. We might not even beat the Giants because of all these injuries. It's it's not going to happen. They're going to beat New York. Oh, when did I say that? No, let's test that theory. Let's test that theory. You get a chance to pick them here. Yeah. I'm I'm taking the Niners. Me too. I'm taking the Niners. All right. Well, uh, take, short and sweet. <laughs> let's we'll let Shrikar talk on this one as the Niners, yeah. you know, representative. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna speak about the Giants first because things just aren't looking good for the Giants right now as, as well. You know, <laughs> and last week I, I I will admit I made a bad pick with the Giants. I was kind of holding out hope that they could get back on track, <laughs> but it just it just didn't work out. And now you don't have Saquon Barkley for the rest of the season. You bring in Devontae Freeman, but you know. In his first game against the Niners defense, I just, I, I, I don't know. I'm still confident Daniel Jones will emerge, you know, as that capable starting quarterback that the Giants want someday, but it's just not going to be on Sunday. There's just too many things going against the Giants in this one, if this makes sense. So um, that's why I kind of have to give the edge to the Niners. Man, uh, I have a friend who's a huge uh, Giants fan, and uh, Saquon Barkley, when he went down, it was tough on both of us, uh, especially because I owned him in fantasy, and I know my friends who are watching this are teasing me because I don't have a running back in that league anymore. And you just traded for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I had Zeke and Hill, and I gave him. But, uh, again, prayers up for that dude, Saquon Barkley. Dude's a stud. I know he'll be back strong. Prayers up for anyone who got hurt yeah, that week. Really, though, yeah. Half the uh, league, but- it seems like. Yeah, crazy. but I, again, the Giants, just not much to look forward to. And the Daniel Jones takes streaker, as much as I'm high on him, I was counting on Saquon Barkley to be there. And we've <laughs> seen it. He's been absolutely terrible without him. So, okay, that, no, you can't say you were right because he, does, he doesn't have his guy. I mean, I can't even, like, come on, no. I, I'm, I'm going to give Daniel Jones a pass for the, at least this year. I'm not going to give him, like, a full pass, but yeah. I will give him a little bit of leeway just because he doesn't have the guy who I thought was going to uplift both of them this season. So, uh, and he was my offensive player of the year candidate. So that went down the drain. Uh, But yeah, I think the Giants just too much dysfunction right now. Uh, I don't know how Daniel Jones is going to look without uh, Saquon Barkley. And frankly, I'm not expecting much. So I got the Niners here and, uh, you know, two and one. uh, Let's see how they do, because I heard Jimmy G could be back earlier. 
And yep. the thing is, they've got uh, a three-game stretch here where it's all winnable games, Giants, Eagles, Finns. But those next games, I'm not even – I'm going to hey, mention something. Like and if I was the Niners, I would not start Jimmy this week. I'd start Mullins because – Oh, we, no, yeah, I wouldn't either. I don't like, think there's just, a – I don't think that's an option. Like, are they even no, thinking he about might, that? He might. He's, he he's might. Not, there's a chance. Not smart. Yeah, but, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, do it. it. Like, I mean, they have to play the Patriots, Seahawks, Packers, Saints – I'm forgetting Bills, I think, That's in that a stretch. Tough stretch, man. So, yeah, let's, I think if I were them, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's take these games one game at a time. So, yeah, I got the Niners here. Yeah, slow it down on that and then slow it down on overreacting to the Niners, you know, losing week yeah. one and the injuries. It, if that's crazy, I'm saying for people to slow down on talking bad about the he's Niners. He's the biggest Niner hater I've he's ever He's the Niner, yeah. And I'm, the, yeah, I'm the Niner hater on this show. But uh, our next game on the list is going to be Cincinnati at Philadelphia. Uh, what do you guys think of that game? Oh my god, this game. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> this isn't fair. This is this isn't fair because man, I I jinxed him and I told these guys, I literally apologized to Carson Wentz for cursing him. I feel so bad. I was so high on him. I still am. I still he's still still my favorite quarterback in this league and uh he's playing like the worst one though. And you know what? I'm going to be objective. I can't defend it. I can't. You're 16 to 21, right? Coming back, you're doing really good, and towards the end of the half, and you throw a pick in the end zone. What? what? I can't. I can't defend it. I'm sorry, I can't. And uh, even against Washington, I get it. The O line played terrible. Uh, receivers couldn't get open. But if you're up 17-0 and you're regarded as a top 10 quarterback, you have to finish it. And right now, Dak Prescott's looking better, and I thought the comparison wasn't even close, and most of us did at the time. So it's not looking good. But here's the game. Joe Burrow looked really good against. Um, was it Cleveland? And so did the Bengals for the most part offensively. That being said, I'm going to hold out hope for one more week. I'm going to take Philly at home. Please, please. I'm, I need this. No, if they go 0 3, I think the season is pretty much over. I, I, I mean, it is the NFC least, so you never know, but I'm holding out hope for this game. Please, Philly. Please, Carson Wentz. Please just get me the dub here. And there's maybe a chance. Hey, look, I'll be honest with you. I have not even, I haven't even come up with a winner yet. I just don't know who I'm going to pick in this game. Who is Carson Wentz throwing to also, man? Come on. It's like, hey, uh, but it's okay. It's okay when you're talking about Wentz and that. And yet Sam Darnold's got way worse receivers still. Yeah, and, but, and then but it's Wentz not a point. Actually, Wentz won hey, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Wentz, can, Wentz can have no Miles Sanders. He can have no o <laughs> He's still going to win, bro. Uh, oh, I really, my God. I really think this game comes down to the Bengals defense stepping up because this is literally the perfect opportunity for that to happen because the Eagles have not been able to get things going on offense this season, really because of their offensive line. So I think the Bengals, you need to keep, you need to get the pressure on Carson Wentz. That's how you're going to win. And you got to force him into mistakes you got to get some stacks. It's just, if that happens, that's going to give Burrow a chance to win the scoreboard race. So who am I taking in this game? I think Cincinnati gets their first win of the season. Okay. That's all right. That's really interesting. Um, I found myself thinking way too much about this game. Uh, mm. And I found myself just, just trying to go too deep. I'm going to simplify it. The Bengals played terrible on defense. Uh, and the Eagles have gone against two teams with pretty good defenses. Um, the Eagles got no pressure last week. Carson Wentz struggles when there is pressure. I'm going with Philly. I'm trying to, over- wow, I'm just trying to simplify what? it. I'm trying to what? simplify it. Wow. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. And I just, yeah, I just want to simplify it. Uh, I think Philly's got a terrible defense uh, and, and that's, or not, sorry, not Philly. Uh, Cincinnati's got a terrible defense. I think Philly gets their first win this week. Simple I'm not sure if Atkins comes back, but if he does, that could change it. And cause I know Jack's not a Wentz hater. So I, I, but I was shocked. I thought he was really going to take Cincy, but yeah, again, if Atkins comes back, it could be a different story, but yeah, I think Jack and I are still holding on hope. At least I am. Shrikar again, confident in his Bengals. Uh, let's see how it goes. I'm but not it, that confident in this pick. He does not confident. Mm-hmm. In the I'm not, I'm not yeah. confident, bro. But I'm confident in either team. It might not even be Carson Wentz in this game. The 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 Bengals could not stop the run against the Browns. And Miles hey, Sanders yeah. had a good week. Miles Sanders looked good. Yeah. As yeah, I it's... said, the Cincinnati defense just needs to step up, man. Well, mm-hmm. that's the thing. They did not look last week like they have they didn't, stepping they didn't. up in them. So they didn't, but I think against the Eagles, this is a great chance to do that. It's okay. interesting. Um, so we talked about the Eagles who have played two pretty good defenses. The Houston Texans have played two great teams in general. They're 0-2. Yep. They're one of the least talked about teams in the league just because, I mean, really, they've played the two best teams in the entire league. 
uh, back-to-back yeah, actually, weeks. And now yeah, they go yeah. against Pittsburgh, who last Which week – Another good yeah, team. They're they're two and zero, but last week they did struggle a little bit against Jeff, Jeff Driscoll. It, they they could have made that game a lot worse than it was. Um, but I'm gonna go with Pittsburgh. We haven't really seen exactly what this Texans team can be against normal opponents. So who knows? They could they could still be you know the team that we projected them to be. Um, but we're gonna find out this week against Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh gets the win. Uh, but hopefully Houston's schedule gets easier. It sucks seeing them have to play these insane teams. It's terrible. Look, I, I know I know the Texans are 0-2, and I know that they, you know, they played the Chiefs and Ravens back to back, but they just haven't they haven't been impressive. And you know, I think it's clear they're missing, you know, some of the playmakers they had on the field last season. Um, <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins, of course. But you look at the Steelers, you know, I think they're I wouldn't say they're they're elite yet, uh, but they're looking like a really good team in the AFC. Ben Roethlisberger's definitely been a big boost under center. Uh, the run game has pretty much excelled no matter who's getting the ball. You know, we saw Connor have a good game last week now. Um, and that defense is still really good. It, it kind of disappointed against the Broncos, but I mean, I think for this game, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Steelers. Um, I, I, I'd probably say that Deshaun Watson is going to have a tough day. Yeah. Again, I, as much as I hate picking this team, uh, it's, Pittsburgh's looked pretty decent. Um, Texans, again, like Jack said, we just haven't seen what they've looked like against quote-unquote normal opponents. I mean, they've, I feel bad, man. The two best teams, and I don't even like – like. Oh, that's just so tough. Uh, yeah. Tough schedule. They do have a pretty easy back half, though, uh, for like those who aren't sure about that. It's pretty easy uh, back half of the schedule. So there is a lot of winnable games. So, you know, they could still salvage it, but, yeah. I think I have them going 0 and 3. A tough start, but I mean you're playing three of the say top seven to eight best teams in the AFC. So uh, you know, it's a it's a hard, hard fought battle here. I got Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's rough, but I think this game will find out a little bit more about what this Texans team is because it's a team that's at least closer to what they are. Our next game, uh uh, the Jets got embarrassed again by basically the Niners practice squad. Uh, Adam Gase looks like yeah. the worst head coach in the league. Can't call plays better than, you know, most people in general in America. Um, and Indianapolis bounced back after losing to Jacksonville and really, you know, they stifled uh, Minnesota offense that looked promising and, and Kirk Cousins threw three picks against them. I'm going to go last on this one just because I, I kind of want to round out this, this talk on the Jets. I mean, do you really think I'm going to pick the Jets here? No, like hell no. I, I I know I'm bad at picking, but like, do you really think I'm going to pick? Them? Yeah, no, I'm not. I think I think yeah, the Colts choked in Week One, then they put the hurting on the Vikings. I think this is a nice turn of events for the Colts because you need you need some more confidence as this season starts to pick up speed, and that's what you're going to get in this Jets game. Philip Rivers hasn't really been all that impressive, and I think the Indy defense has been suspect at times. Um, but I'm really liking Jonathan Taylor. He's definitely breaking out this year. Um, but I think I think this is going to be a confidence booster for the Colts because look, Sam Darnold is just not looking good. I know he had that one throw against the Niners in garbage oh, wow. time that people six, like to six. harp on. Oh, I, let's get I will him not, out of New I will York. not tolerate the Sam Darnold slander after that game. Sixth best uh, hey, PFF score I'll, I'll of any I'll quarterback last week. I'll yep. lay off Darnold. Uh, but I, yeah. I think overall that offense just lacks firepower. The defense just doesn't have the playmakers. And, you know, that just became all too apparent in that week two game against the Niners. So I'm going to take Colts. <laughs> yep. So, you know, beginning of the year, Jack tells me this game is clearly the Jets' favor. And I tell him, <laughs> okay, all right. All right, they're going to beat the Colts. Okay, all right. Hell no. Hell no. Right. And uh, oh my God, Sam Donald avoids the sack, throws it on the run, touchdown, final score. What was it? Thir- 13 31 to 31. To 16. Oh, I'm just wow. saying he's got it in him. Oh, stop the, br- no, stop the, br- like, you know, put the pump, like, break, put that, ah, stop the brakes on everything. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's over. Pump right? the brakes on the oh, grammar right there. Yeah. I don't even oh, know. I'm man. tripping, but, you know, like, I can't even, like, comprehend this. Sam Donald threw a touchdown in garbage time. Oh my God. Oh, wow. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Colts are gonna win this game. Um, the Jets, yeah, Adam Gase is just terrible. I, I feel bad. Like I, I do feel bad for him. I, I really do. I like it's just terrible, uh, terrible thing. I think really Bell could have done well. I could have helped Sam Darnold a lot. He, he had forty six yards through uh, one and a half quarters uh, in the game that they were playing against Buffalo. So 
to make this a little bit more serious than I would have been. Uh, I do think the Colts win this game. Uh, just feel bad for Marlon Mack going back to uh, week one, just uh, contract year and uh, tears his Achilles. That's just tough. But yeah, Jonathan Taylor's look really good. Uh, but yeah, will the Jets beat the Colts? Hell no. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Colts move on to two and one. The Jets move on to a solid 0 and three. And uh, Mike, if you're watching this, they're not going five and one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Jets have looked like the worst team in the league the first two weeks. And uh, me and Anish had the exact same picks last week. Uh, and it's we've had the exact same picks up to this point this week. I, I'm switching it right here. You're uh, still taking them all. I, I am sticking one. with my original pick. Wow. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm picking the Jets in this game. Uh, and okay. I probably sound like the stupidest person in the world right now. No one else is going to pick the Jets. Uh, I am right now. I'm picking the Jets. Uh, I think that... Spat my water out, man. <laughs> Yeah, Indianapolis, uh, just like the Jets, have a lot of injuries. Uh, good thing those injuries are to corners, which is kind of plays to the Jets' strength uh, because they do not play well against teams that have good secondaries. Um, I think that Quinn Williams proved last week he can get it done against good offensive linemen, had two sacks, two tackles for loss um, against the Niners. Um, Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, I think, played well. Uh, and the – Okay. Okay. I, no, hey, Jack, hey, Jack, Jack, listen. Go, go, go. Listen. Just go. Props so, to being you for out there, man, for just going yeah. out there and picking the Jets, man. You know what? I, I remember I'm when gonna... I picked the Bengals <laughs> against the Ravens and I'm... it all came crashing oh down. My man. God, man. I'm keeping my faith in, in my favorite player and I'm keeping my faith in my team. I'm taking the Jets it. in this one. Uh, and <laughs> if, if they win, I better not hear. You know what? You guys better applaud me for that one. Hey, I'll, we'll I will, respect, but I mean, man. what is this like? Oh my God, stop the presses. They're going to go to the playoffs now. No. <laughs> no, 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 but at least I'll Come have on, gotten man. this one right. Stop the brakes. Pump the stop. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying, but all like, oh my God, Sam Darnold threw it to what was it, Barrios? Braxton exactly. Barrios. That's the point. Oh my God. Wow. In garbage time, dude. Look, in no, all no, seriousness, no, no. We'll, see. we'll see, man. In all we'll seriousness, see. the Colts right now are lacking wide receiver and they're lacking corner. And it's that's the things that Jets struggle with the most is going up against teams with good wide receiver cores and going up against teams that have good corners. Um, You know what? It's probably the dumbest prediction in the world. They're probably y'all need Bell back. I just think Gore just can't get it done on the ground. Like three yards of carry. It's just not efficient. He played well. It's the the problem is Gase's play calling was just terrible, but he realizes now how hot his seat is on. I believe both, both coordinators and Gase need to step up in some way. And hopefully they figure it out in this game. You know, they're, they're not a good team. They won't be a good team for the entire year, but hopefully they try and, you know, hopefully they make it work in this game and prove me right on this pick. Let's move on so you guys can't talk about how dumb that was anymore. Uh, Carolina okay, and Los man. Angeles. We got to see Herbert last week in a surprise start, um, and we really don't know what to expect this week. Uh, Taylor will play if he's 100%, but we don't know if he's going to be. And so prediction right now, I believe, is that Herbert's going to start because um, we don't know if Taylor could be able to get to 100%. I think no matter what, I'm going to have Los Angeles winning this game. A, a Panthers team without Christian McCaffrey is – it's really no Panthers team at all, uh, and it's definitely not a good one. Um, so I'm taking Los Angeles in this game. Uh, I think that no matter who starts a quarterback, it's it's an easy pick for me. And if I was the Chargers, I'd, I'd start Herbert, you know, because he, he answered the call. He made some big plays. He kept the Chargers in that game in week two until the very end, and he did make some rookie mistakes. But, you know, Anish pointed this out uh, – in our last episode, the winners and losers, he was learning in the game. And I think at this moment, you know, Anthony Lynn is more, he's leaning towards Tyrod. I just don't know, but I think, I don't think that's really going to change my pick in any way. I'm going to go with the chargers in this one, just because as Jack said, the loss of Christian McCaffrey, it won't help them in any way. Um, I think this defense could shut down Teddy Bridgewater and walk away with their second win of the year. This might sound like the most nerdy thing ever, but when I watch games, I just love to analyze quarterbacks. I just love to like see how they do. And Justin Herbert against the Chiefs was a perfect example. Again, I watched that game end to end. I'm not going to ramble on because I said it in the winners and losers, but he looked good. And I think he honestly did outplay my homeboy up until that final stretch, which is when again, my homeboy magic, you know what he does. That's, that's my guy. But uh, going back to this game, I, I disagree a little bit. I don't think this Panthers team is nothing without McCaffrey. I thought they did pretty well through the air. Uh, I know Bridgewater made a couple mistakes, but it was a rainy day, right? Humid, hot. So yeah, he's going to have a couple of turnovers, but he was able to get the ball down the field to uh, Robbie Anderson and GJ Moore. So it, it was, it was promising a little bit. I'm not going to say it was terrible, but I think they can get it down the field a little bit. 
not to the extent of what my homeboy did last week, but I think they do. Uh, I'm not going to say that the Panthers will win this game, though. I got the Chargers, even if Tyrod starts. Uh, but I, I really do hope Justin Herbert does because it's a confidence booster for the entire team. I think it gave the entire team confidence that day. Uh, you could see it with Keenan Allen. He played a lot more passionate. I mean, he had like four catches the week one. Second week, he played with a lot more heart. You could just see it on the field. Uh, and I think the entire team did, to be honest. And uh, watch out for this running game, uh, Joshua Kelly and Austin Eckler. Like, it's a good combo that's looking so far. So uh, I got a little bit of faith in the Chargers this week. Uh, I'm going to pick them as well. I believe, is this the first game in their new stadium, or was did they play the Chiefs last no, week? No, they played the Chiefs. No, they, they played the Chiefs. So in there. And so yeah. far, okay. Well, that, that was another factor I was looking to add. But uh, we move on to our next game. Uh, Denver has been just ravaged by injuries. Uh, and yeah. it could be I, – I would, I would argue it could be worse than, than what – the 49ers have had to go through it's not really, worse than the Niners it's but not it's, worse it's but I'd, clear, I'd say the AFC second. wise AFC wise they're the worst yeah I mean they've lost it's they lost Von second. Miller before the season and now they've lost Drew Locke for just about as long as Cortland Jimmy Garoppolo will be out and Cortland Sutton's out for the year so mm-hmm. this team that looked like the most improved Lindsay team in the AFC yeah thing. uh Lindsay or not sorry the Broncos were looked to be the most improved team in the AFC and injuries have really put a halt to that to that storyline and now they have to go against Tampa Bay, who looked pretty good last week, especially on defense. Um, it's I was I've not been impressed by either of these teams throughout the, throughout the year so far and through the two weeks. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. I trust Tom Brady to get it done in this one, uh, and I hope that the Tampa Bay defense continues to play well. It's, it's such a it's just a bummer, man. Because me and Anish did an episode where we said the Broncos were the yeah. most improved team in the AFC, and I was really hoping the Broncos would emerge as that wild card in the AFC. And it is, it's just looking like that may not work out. Two early losses, an injury to Drew Locke. I mean, I'm just I'm going to take Tampa Bay. And in this game, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of defense, you know, not a lot of scoring. This Denver defense has not been that bad, even without Von Miller. They've, yeah. I think they've been a standout. I just, I just don't see this offense without Locke keeping up with Brady and the Bucks. So it's just as simple as that. I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Secondaries look great, or at least A.J. Boye. Dude's yeah. been tremendous. Uh, I just wanted to say that. A.J. Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster, two tough matchups. He's played really well against them. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I just feel bad for the Broncos. Uh, I've got, they had so much potential this year, at least. And uh, I think, really, if they start off 0-3, maybe 0-4 because locks out from two to six weeks, maybe tank, uh, and you could be loaded as hell next year. Uh, think about that. Like just Top you know, five to seven pick. And with all these players coming back, it's scary to think about. But again, as of right now, we're focusing on the Bucks and the Broncos. Again, I trust Tom Brady in these winnable games. I just don't think he'll make all these mistakes. But you're right. The Bucks haven't looked that impressive. I mean, they let the Panthers really stay in that game till the very end. Uh, that shouldn't have been the case. And his arm looked a little bit inconsistent. But again, you guys know how I feel about Tom Brady. He's the GOAT, uh, best player, in my opinion, ever play. So I'm going to trust his instincts and his IQ. I got the Bucks winning this game. Uh, the next game, uh, it seems like probably the easiest game to pick on the schedule. Um, but Arizona's looked amazing uh, in, in their first two weeks, uh, and Detroit really hasn't looked that all that great. They got out to a, to a big lead. They're not a big lead, but an early lead against the Packers, and, and just the Packers took it back and didn't look back after that. Uh, and I think that Arizona kind of – I mean, I, I, I'm picking Arizona to win. Uh, this was the easiest pick for me of the week. I wouldn't say it was the, it's the easiest pick for me because the easiest pick was taking the Colts over the Jets for me, man. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> hey, look, look, I, th- I I'm gonna take Arizona. I just Darnold don't see... slander, Darnold slander. No, I'm just <laughs> I just I just don't see Stafford in this offense keeping up with Kyler Murray and that Arizona offense. They've just been on fire so far, and good for Arizona. You know, Kyler Murray's looking like the franchise quarterback that the Cardinals drafted him to be, and you know this defense, it's young very high upside if they can continue to deliver this this team is going to be one worth taking seriously I'll say that much um so I, I'm gonna say Arizona in this one it was an easy pick I wouldn't say the easiest I wouldn't say it's like my lock of the week or anything but look I'm taking Arizona so for everyone in Trigar included who said Matthew Stafford's underrated he's a top 10 quarterback top eight quarterback I even had some uh, six how's he looked I'm curious because he it's, got outplayed by Mitch Trubisky in the fourth quarter week one. And then week two, when it's still a close game at his own 10, throws a pick six. So because la- when I've checked, I-, I haven't seen this whole top six quarterback thing. Uh, when did I say it. he's top six? No, no. From other guys, from other guys. Uh, but you said okay. top 10. I still haven't seen that. I yeah, I said top borderline 15. top 10. 
Yeah, That's so uh, I haven't seen that. Um, so, yeah, Matthew Stafford, where you at, bro? I really haven't seen much. But, yeah, I got the Cardinals here. Look really good. And uh, Kyler's taking that. He's the third guy to take a sophomore leap. I mean, he's mm-hmm. really looked amazing. And did you guys see the move where he faked the ball? Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Mid game. Yeah. No, the thing is, too, I – I've always tried to like mirror, like in real life, mirror my game to Kyler Murray. And like, I do it. I've seen him do it in college all the time, but to do that in the NFL and pull it off like that. Incredible. Uh, just incredible thing from him. And, you know, a lot of people were skeptical on this team, the development of uh, Kyler Murray and Deandre Hopkins. Some saw it as a parallel to Baker and Odell, but we've one thing we know for sure. Kyler Murray is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield. Deandre Hopkins has looked better than Odell Beckham Jr. He is better than Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, he is. He is. And we've seen as a result, the Cardinals looking way better. I think they really go 3-0 here. This division, man, my God. But, yeah, Cardinals mm-hmm. over lines. Uh, and then the next game, uh, Dallas, it, it, it was gonna, there were going to be a lot of questions uh, going in if they had lost to, to the Falcons. They end up coming back, uh, but it's still, it's still impossible to deny the team, that, the team that was playing in that first half. It did not look like a very good Dallas Cowboys team. Yes, they were missing their two tackles, but – there's, that, there's no excuses for fumbling four times, I believe, in just the first quarter alone. Um, and this offense, up until the last to the end of the game, was not looking any different than the offense from last year. But Seattle has looked amazing. Russell Wilson is the MVP front runner right now. Uh, I believe he gets it done again at home. I really just want to see them start losing some games so the Jets get a better draft pick. Uh, but Seattle's winning this one. Well, I just can't pick against the Seahawks right now. I just can't bet against Russell Wilson. You know, this this team is looking like they could make a deep playoff run. And I'm saying that as a Niner fan. I hate the Seahawks, but look, I got to give it up to them. The Cowboys, yes, they're one and one. And Cowboys fans, I know Dak Prescott's playing well. Zeke is still <laughs> a stud. They've got talent on defense. But with all that said, you know, they're not in a position to slow down Russell Wilson. They couldn't, they couldn't even keep Matt Ryan from shredding them. Just think about that. So Matt Ryan shreds a lot of teams, though. That's true, but look, I, I don't think this Dallas defense can slow down Russell Wilson. That's just my point. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take the Seahawks in this one. So with Dallas, at least, um, again, Jack, it's not about how you start. It's how you finish. And they looked great in that they fourth did. quarter. Yep. And uh, they did get a little bit of a lucky roll, bounce, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what Blunder to say about Blunder from that. Atlanta yeah, is what I would call it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they, you know what? Tip my hat off to Dak. Three rushing touchdowns, 450 yards. I mean, just a tremendous game. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but that moment between Hayden Hurst and him about the mental health thing. That was I really, love that, man. Really cool to see. The wholesome moment. Um, so, you know, I, I think with the Seattle and Dallas, I just don't think they can keep up with Russell Wilson. It's And just the dude, I mean, the passes that he completes downfield. How? Please, someone explain to me. I mean, the one to David Moore was insane. I don't know how he got that. That's a perfect ball. I, that was the most per, one of the most perfect passes I've seen in a while. That was incredible. Um, I think AWS had it as like the least like percentage completed pass or whatever in the last two years or something like that. AWS so loves Russell Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they are Seattle. They are from yeah, Seattle. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Um, but yeah, again, I got Seattle here. I just uh, Dallas could. Pl- I mean, they do get their tackles back. So let's let's see how they do, but I'm not picking against Seattle, and I believe they're home, too, so I'm not going to mm-hmm. uh, pick against them. Hey, and Anish, stop the DK Metcalf slander. He's I, a better than I never better said he was Debo bad. Sam- I just, no, no, Debo Samuel is, as of right now, I'm still taking my guy. I, until I see it, until I see Debo, like, fall off cliff or something, I'm still taking the guy who should have won Super Bowl MVP. If the well, he can won. do that against Stephon Gilmore, the reigning defensive player of the year? No. I mean, we haven't seen it, so. We, he, hey, we will see it. We will see it. We will uh, see if it. If he's healthy. That's right? true. Yeah. We I, we won't see him do what DK did is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, but yeah, our, our next there. game, uh, Green Bay's looked amazing. Uh, kind of, you know, surpassing a little bit of what we thought. We still think they'd, we still thought they'd be a good team, but not this good. Uh, New Orleans, they did lose uh, last week, but they have the best record in the league the last three years. And also it's important to note, they have yet to reach 2-0 two, two and o since 2013. They haven't had a 2-0 yeah. start since 2013. Yep. So this is normal for New Orleans. Um, the reason that Las Vegas beat them is because of Darren Waller. The the Saints had no answer to Darren Waller uh, and the tight end group in general. The Green Bay does so not. So you have don't that. you don't think they're missing Michael Thomas? They are missing Michael Thomas, and I said in an episode I believe that Michael Thomas is more important to the Saints right now than Drew Brees is. Uh, you guys, you didn't completely agree with me, but I think it's obvious. Um, 
Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater won games uh, and big games for the Saints last year with Michael Thomas. Drew Brees could not win this year against the Raiders without him. Yep. Michael Thomas, I believe, is more important to the Saints than Drew Brees, and I think it was proven on Monday night. But also, it's normal for the Saints to not start 2-0, and obviously. The Green Bay Packers do not have a Darren Waller. They do not have that kind of tight end. Jay Sternberger. Uh, they, that is the X factor for most teams against the Saints, it seems like. The Green Bay Packers do not have that. It's also normal for the Saints to not start out 2-0. So do not overreact to this game. I'm not going to re- overreact to this game. I'm going to take the Saints to beat the Packers. I'm going to take the Saints as well. I just I just have a hard time picking against Drew Brees. Um, but I think the Packers have already dug themselves into holes this season. And they were able to come back against the Lions in week two. But look, the Saints are not going to – they're not going to let you come back in the game. Once the Saints take a lead, I, I don't think it's going to be hard to get it back. So I think Aaron Rodgers will do some damage. Um, but I believe Brees wins this one. I think – I, I think I think it is going to be a one possession game, but uh, yeah, ultimately I'm going to take New Orleans. I have nothing else to say. This is going to be the most Colin Coward take that I'm going to make, but um, like you know, with Aaron Rodgers, at least I saw him on the Pat McAfee show. He looks and he feels a lot better than where he was at last year, and he clearly said that. And I think maybe it was because of Danica Patrick and all that stuff, off the field stuff. But he's felt a lot better, and you can see it in his play. He's a lot more energetic, you know, more. Uh, you know, expressive with teammates. And they, and as a result, the Packers have looked really good. Um, the problem is, here's two things why I'm picking the Saints. One, to be conservative so that we get a clean sweep here. Oh uh, and, <laughs> oh, and two, I just don't think, because the Lions got out to an early lead, I just don't think the Saints would look back, uh, would do the same thing that they did against the Raiders. And Jack has made a great point when he said that uh, today morning also in our chat. He's right. Like the Saints gave up 48 points to the Bucks week one, right? And everyone was like, oh my God, this team, what the hell is going on? And, you know, then they, they, you they know, pick up back. right where they left off and go 13 and three. Uh, but I, I said it in my record prediction, right? I ha- told both of you, I had them going like 11 and five. I thought they would lose a little bit more games than people would think. So I wasn't really that surprised with this Raiders loss. I told you guys, the Raiders would keep it close. This one, I'm going to pick the Saints again a little bit just to stay conservative and two. I don't think they blow another lead like that. And I don't think Drew Brees needs to get the ball down the field as much as he needed to against the Raiders. Uh, and I think the Saints defense will play a lot better than they did, especially with a banged up Devontae Adams. And again, no other really X factor I see from uh, the Green Bay Packers. So I got the Saints here. Uh, but you know what? I, I probably would have picked the Packers if I wasn't so conservative, but I got the Saints here. And also, it's it's important to note Michael Thomas is listed as questionable for this game. So yeah, yeah. if they get him back, that'll be that'll be very important for the Saints. But I, I'm predicting they could still get it done without him. Mm-hmm. And then the big matchup of the week, and even the entire season in general, yep. the two best teams in the league, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Baltimore Ravens. I want to go last on this one. I, I want to I want to let you two go first. So, you go ahead. Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. Again, until I see it. Mahomes, boy, I'm going okay. with the Chiefs, and I'm telling you, listen, until I see it, this is the clear-cut number one team. The Ravens win, okay, maybe there's a uh, there's a story there, depending on how they win. But I'm going with my homeboy. I'm going with the Chiefs. I, I it'll be a good game. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be like a blowout or anything, but I'm going with the Chiefs. I trust my homeboy more than I trust Lamar Jackson. That is literally it. You can make fun of me all you want. That's my one reason. And that is the one reason why I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs is because they have the best quarterback in the NFL. It's not close. As much as Russell Wilson is doing right now, I'm sorry. I'm picking the guy who just won a Super Bowl. I'm picking the guy that just did another fourth quarter comeback and another game-winning drive on his resume. And, uh, yeah, that's all I need to say, really. Uh, Chiefs win. Okay, this, this is a tough one. Who wins Mahomes versus Lamar? I'm going to say Jackson comes away as the winner of this matchup. Why? Honestly, it has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with Lamar. It, it just has more to do with the Baltimore Ravens team as a whole, because this roster, it really looks like it's built to go the distance this year. They've got an offense, you know, loaded with weapons. They can score at any given moment. Uh, they got one of the better defenses in the league. Um, got some of the league's top playmakers on that defense. They have an amazing kicker punter duo. I know it doesn't matter, but <laughs> I know. I mean, they, they have no holes, man. All, like, all of the pieces are there, man. 
And yeah, I, look, this really. isn't this isn't me like trying to discredit the Chiefs at all because they're an outstanding team. But I don't think the defense is quite as talented. Their running game is not as dynamic, even with the addition of Ceh. I think the Ravens squeak out a win and move to three and zero. I'm going with Baltimore. I've said all off season that I was going to pick the Ravens in this game. I've said all off season I believe that the Ravens are better set up for the future than the Chiefs are. I've said mm-hmm. all off season I believe the Ravens have a better roster than the Chiefs do. Yes, you do. Um, I'm not changing anything. I'm going with the Ravens. Okay. Um, they've really dominated in both the games they've played. Uh, and they dominated all last year regular season. Yes, they weren't able to get it done in the playoffs. This is not a playoff game. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's, it's not. not uh, like Sugar said, there's not a hole on this roster. I'm sticking with my gut feeling, uh, and Lamar Jackson's going to get it done. Um, it might not even be completely him. This Ravens team in general is just going to get it done, in my opinion. Best roster in the NFL. Best you know regular season team in the NFL last year. So far, th- looks like the best team in the league in the first two weeks. I'm sticking with my gut feeling. Uh, we're going to have a full episode, you know, going over the entire. I just want to say one thing preview, before we but... end it though. Just one thing. Again, I, I think the Ravens should be favored, honestly. And I'm, I'm not surprised that you guys are picking it. I'm just going to roll out with the guy, the guy right. that I believe in more. And, you know, it's tough because the Ravens probably would be that one team to go like 15 and one. And unfortunately have that playoff heartbreak. We've seen it with the Panthers and the Packers, right? The last two teams that do that. I feel like this Ravens team could be the next one. But I'm going to roll with the guy that I trust, and that is literally the only reason why I'm picking. Yeah, and we're like I said, we're going to roll out a full episode as a game preview. We'll do that throughout the year for the biggest uh, kind of matchups of the year and the big primetime games. Um, but that look out for that in the next couple of days, kind of going over the entire thing. Obviously, we couldn't dive into the full rosters and you know the full two games that they've played so far. But we're gonna have a full episode on that, so don't worry. Uh, well, you know our picks right now, but you'll get kind of the full insights of that game. Um, and this is this was, I think, my favorite episodes we've done for picks so far. Obviously, we've got some yeah. more different picks this week. Um, yep. So you'll look to see Fun. a little bit of a change in the records next week. Um, you know, obviously, I'm going to go 16. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm never going to go 16 to no. But with that uh, Jets pick, you're not going 16 to no, dog. No, 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 no. Don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on him. Um, but I'm very excited to kind of see what's going to happen. That's so hard. Convinced Sam Darnold. Goff. Better. It's not better than Jared Goff. Just to put, to put to the brakes, the pump. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah, I think this was the best episode of picks we've done so far. Uh, let us know down in the comment section who you've got winning some of these big games. Who do you have winning Chiefs and Ravens? Uh, as well as go check out our Instagram and vote, 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 so that you can have the input on the fans' picks also, for each shout game. Also, our giveaway winners. Jack will put it. Yeah, I was gonna, just going to mention that. Our, we had a giveaway on Instagram. We're going to shout out everyone that won for every episode of the season, so you'll see a graphic here. Go follow them. Tell them Cold Our Truth sent you. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, we had a blast recording it. And uh, hopefully another good week of picks. Obviously, last week we had some good records. Let's hope that continues. Uh, but I hope I come out on top this time. I know <laughs> the other two hope they do too. But uh, go Jets. Go Ravens. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Go Niners. Go Browns.